Good morning, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Welcome to Two Girls Treasure. And we're live on Rethunk Junk's main page today, and that is no April Fool's joke. I'm gonna be honest, I did try to come up with some really good material, and I ran it past Mel and Charlotte. It didn't go over real well, so we won't be doing any April Fool's jokes today. We do have incredible wind here in South Carolina. I'm very hopeful that we will be just fine and we won't lose power. We're gonna roll through as if we are gonna be just fine. How are you doing this morning? Much love and all of our prayers to our friends across the Mid-South. We know that there were some terrible storms and tornadoes that touched down across the Mid-South and across the Midwest yesterday and last night. Um, if you're one of our Rethunk Junk users, if you're one of our Rethunk Junk fans, one of our Rethunk Junk family, please check in on the comments and let us know that you are okay, that your family is safe. We've been worried about you and praying for you all night. We want to make sure you're good to go. Mel's got the store open. If you're local, come <laughs> by. You can watch this. You can come grab a chair. See the chair? It's painted in rethunk junk. You can come grab that chair and sit right here and watch this tutorial because no joke, I get asked a lot, can you blend? Well, of course you can. Rethunk junk paint is a water-based paint. Of course you can blend. It is probably the best paint you could blend with. Your open time, 15, 20 minutes per coat. You can't get better blending ability than that because if it dries too quickly, you can't move the paint together. So you can't really blend. You don't really have that problem with Rethunk Junk. Even though it does dry quickly, it doesn't dry so fast that you can't work with it. We also have a mister bottle so that we can mist those lines, move that paint when we need to. I've got a couple of fans set up. I've got both cameras. Mel is tapping on the laptop. This is what we're gonna be working on today. It's so cute. And before you go, don't paint that. Listen, this has been here for sale for weeks now. Nobody has wanted it. Let me show you the amazing artwork that was done on this piece of furniture previously, because this, this is early century unattended children with paint and a paintbrush. Can you see this on the side? Orange and, you know, if I didn't know better, these were rethunk junk colors because Mel, this <laughs> looks like bashful blush and peacock feather and sunset and violet shadow except this is not Rethunk Junk Paint. And while I did do a cleanup and I did knock the bumps and drips and runs off here, and while this is a really beautiful and old oak piece of furniture, nobody wants it looking like this. And nobody's gonna take the time to refinish it in an oak finish. Me, on the other hand, I see this amazing blend of wild berry and coral crush and peacock, flamingo, not peacock feather. My mind's on peacock feather. And I see these colors blended together from the top down rather than the bottom up. So I think it's going to be an amazing finish. I'm gonna make sure that I can see myself on Rethunk Junk. If you are watching, say hello so I know I am actually live in the right place at the right time today. It's Saturday, April 1st. Let's paint a piece of furniture. Let's kick this April 1st thing off the right way. I'm gonna kick you over to a solo view and at any time, if you have questions, please feel free to ask. I love blending colors. 
I love a very colorful finish and I want to show you how simple and easy it is to do this. I've got the hardware turned inside the drawer and I have the screws for the drawer, not the drawer knob. It's not a door knob, a drawer knob. I have the knobs inside, I have the hardware outside, and that way when I get ready to open the drawers back up, I'll be able to. It won't be an issue, won't be a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and kick those fans on and let's get started. I'm gonna start with Wildberry. Most of the time, when you see an ombre blend, you will see your lighter colors at the top, your darker colors at the bottom. This time we're gonna do just the opposite of that. I want to, I'm gonna slide by you, pardon me. I'm gonna start right here at this top edge and I'm gonna go down. I haven't quite settled on what to do on the very, very top. So we're gonna leave that alone and we're just gonna hit this. This has all been prepped many times because we were trying to get that paint off the side and the marker off the front. So we're just gonna start with our wild berry. I'm gonna hit the underside first, and then I'm going to cut right across this top line. Now, if you're not terribly familiar with Rethunk Junk Paints, this is an amazing brand. There are 45 colors on this color chart. That light is giving me a horrific glare on that, but check with your local retailer. If you're not terribly familiar with all the colors of Rethunk Junk Paint, get familiar. Check the recipe tab on the Rethunk Junk website so that you know every little thing you can do that has been done and you can do it too. Now I'm going to bring this down and I'm just going to bring it all the way across both drawers. I want to get a good base coat of the colors I'm working with before I start the blending. That gives me the opportunity to let one color dry, gives me a good base to start with, and gives me the place where I want to start the blend. When I put the first colors on, it doesn't immediately have to be the blend. It doesn't. You do this however it works for you. Don't worry about how other people do it. Do it the way it works for you. And you'll have to practice this. Blending is not a skill set that just comes to you. You have to practice just a little bit. And I'm going to stop right there with the wild berry and I'm going to spin around. I'm going to spin my little table. There we go. And we're going to hit this side. Isn't that a great paint job? Early century unattended children with paint is what I call that. <laughs> because when you leave kids alone with paint, and kids love to paint. And you know, Rethunk Junk Paint is non-toxic. You can let the kids paint too. Give them some Rethunk Junk on a rainy Saturday. Let them do some creativity. Let them express themselves through one of the 45 or 10 of the 45 colors. They might have project ideas that you didn't even know they had. Look how amazingly easy Rethunk Junk Paint covers whatever that may have been. And we prepped and we scrubbed and it did not come off. And I think we're about even there. I'm going to come right down underneath that lip edge and I'll stop right there. This gives me a good base coat of Wildberry to start from. And we're going to spin it around and we're going to hit the other end. This is really 
really how it is when you're painting furniture and you um you have to spin it so you can get from one side to the other i have this cool little early century coffee table and it was just the right size to put this chest of drawers on so i would be able to spin it around in the studio and have the height i needed so i didn't have to crawl around on the floor i might have to get down there when i get to the legs but for right now we're good to go where we are i appreciate you being with me if you're just joining thank you I'm Diane Pruitt. I'm the proprietor of Two Girls Treasure in Florence, South Carolina. I'm an authorized Rethunk Junk retailer. I love this paint. When I started this business, I was studying different brands. I wanted to make sure that whatever I invested in was the one brand that I had to have. I didn't have a lot of cash flow starting up to invest in several different brands of paint. But the very first time I put Rethunk Junk paint on a paintbrush and painted over something, I could not give Laura Whitlow my money fast enough. Now, we've got a little bit extra on the side than we do on the front. That is perfectly okay. I'm gonna drop my wildberry brush in a cup and let's move forward into some flamingo now as you hear the doorbell ring that means we have company coming and they may want to come in and watch us paint so i think this will be exciting i love company in the house when we're doing work now this is drying nicely but i want to spin it back around to the front because that's where we started and I want to go back to where we started so I can keep coming forward. We'll do the front, we'll do the right side, we'll do the left side and we'll spin around and around until we have all of our colors really well based on the front of this chest. All right, can you see the whole thing? Let me ease you around just a little bit. Good morning folks, how are you? All right, here goes our flamingo. I have it in a cup because I knew at this point that I was going to be dirtying up my brush and I didn't want to contaminate the paint that I have in the container just because I like to keep my paint clean and I have little plastic containers to put my paint in. So when I'm blending, I don't contaminate much of anything. And I like it that way. So we'll cross that line right there with the wild berry. I'm not worried right this second about blending it. I'm gonna lay my colors in, then we're gonna blend. Now we have four colors. We have wild berry, flamingo, coral crush, which I absolutely adore. And then we have sunflower. We want to save the legs for the sunflower and the bottom edge, and we want to save about three quarters of this drawer front for the coral crush, darker to lighter all the way down. So I'm going to put just a little more peacock feather on the front of this, and it's drying really nicely. A good base coat. You want a good base coat because you're gonna be going over this again. And this is how I do it. This is not necessarily how everybody else does it. This is how I like to work through. I wanna make sure that dark oak finish is covered. So I wanna take the time to get a good base started. Now let me turn this back. And we'll do this side in our flamingo. Aren't these great spring colors? Would you paint your front door this way? Would you paint any of your outdoor embellishments, your beautiful yard art this way? Well, just know that if you want to, it's possible you can blend Rethunk Junk paint. 
It's so simple. And I'm gonna show you how today. We're gonna cover this up. I'm gonna put a little extra on here to cover that bright orange. We'll have a good coat over the top of this and we'll let that dry nicely. There we go. All right. You love those colors? Good morning, everybody. My brush is the two inch Wooster Shortcut brush and you'll find that most of your Rethunk Junk retailers use these brushes. And you'll find that I use them every day. I use them and abuse them and they love me for it. Paint brushes are very important, just as important as the prep you do. Paint brushes are as important as the paint you use. But what I have found, and I have tested it, I have experimented, you don't have to spend $40 on a paintbrush to get something that gives you an amazing finished result. The Wooster Shortcut brushes are easy to find at your Rethunk Junk retailers. And if you order online directly from the manufacturer on the Rethunk Junk by Laura.com website, you'll find your Wooster two inch shortcut brushes right there available for you to order and use. These are amazing brushes, I agree. There we go. Simple and easy. Love that, love that flamingo. Now, we're getting down in those short, just my water, not my paint. We're getting down in those short rows, so I'm gonna tip the camera down just a little bit so you can see the rest of the chest. I'm going to set that to the side. We're going to get our coral crush out. I've shaken this up really well, made sure the lid was loose so that we could take this off really simply and easy. I forgot to pour this in a cup, so we're just going to roll with it. Y'all ready for this? Doesn't that look like orange sherbet? Doesn't that look precious and yummy? Now I see a couple of drips I'm going to need to address. So I'll put this on. I've got a good thick layer started. The thing about the blend is that it always looks like a mess when you start. It doesn't look like what you intend. And don't be intimidated. Blending doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. You have to work for it. And it's not always easy to make it work the way you want. Be patient with the process. Be patient with yourself. Don't be so critical. No one at Rethunk Junk is going to be critical of you in that way. Take your time. Let's get... Painty side right here. I've got a couple of runs I want to catch real quick. Always check your ridges and your edges because that's where you'll get paint drips. That's where you'll get paint buildup. And if you will address it while it's wet, you can smooth it back out. If you leave it until it's dry, you will have a blob. And you don't want a blob. So make sure as you're working, you're checking those ridges and edges. Mel, what do you think? Is this what we were going for here? This is what we were going for. Oh, I, I love like it. it. I'm so excited. That coral crush is just coral so crush. Pretty. I could eat it. I could just eat it. But don't it eat it. It looks like sherbet. It looks it does. That's what I just said. It looks like orange sherbet. And I I love orange sherbet. I love rainbow sherbet. And this will kind of have that tone on it. It will. Mm -hmm. All right. it, it does already look like rainbow sherbet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring my coral crush down just a little bit further on this side. 
because remember we still have sunflower. We're going dark to light and I wanted to put a good base of color on before we started our blend. Just because this is such a dark finish and because it was child painted previously. All right, around we go. A rolly cart is a godsend when you're working furniture. Uh, just find some wheels and something that fits what you're working with and make sure you can roll it around. That way you don't have to jump around your pieces up off the floor. You can protect your carpet. You can protect your beautiful wood floors. And it's easier to work on the furniture if you're getting older not old if you're getting a little bit older it's easier to get up off the floor when you're not so far down promise it is all right we're going to bring the coral right down onto that plank and we're going to stop right there mel this is going to be beautiful it is i love it all right back around to the front and i i know this is a lot of movement, but I have both fans on it. So as we're moving, this paint is drying and it's doing everything we need it to do. I believe this is my yellow brush. So we're gonna grab this and I'll take my little stir stick out, tamp it off and here we go. Our last color in our ombre blend on this beautiful little early century chest. We'll let this set in across this front side as we do the other sides. And then when we get done with the other sides, this will be ready to blend. We still have a little bit of a drip right there, so we're gonna knock that loose right there on the edges. Check your edges and your ridges as you're moving through. That will be your weak point, and that will be the place where your paint will just run on down and cause a problem. There we go. All right, let's roll this around. How about it? Are you down far enough? Let's see. There we go. Now you can see the feet. And I'm looking at these feet and I'm thinking she would look great if she had a little bit of silver high-heeled shoes on, wouldn't she? All right, y'all come on in the house. Come see this beautiful Rethunk Junk Spring Blend. I have plans for this baby. I've been looking at it for a while thinking she needs a new makeover. And spring's coming, spring is here. It's been a little cold, y'all. But that's what spring is all about. It's the change in the temperatures. And we're going to get hot here before long and everybody's going to be crying. All right. We got the legs done. We've got the bottom done. Let's spin around and let's get that other side. Can you vision the blend now? I see a drip. I'm going to catch it with my finger as we spin around. Can you vision this blend? It looks funny right now, doesn't it? Give me just a few minutes and I'll show you how amazing this can look. All right, blending up. Dark to light. Oh, and look how that's gonna blend right there. That's gonna be so pretty. If you're in the Florence, South Carolina area today, please feel free to drop by. See this happening in person. We love to have company in the house. 
Oh, that's gonna be so pretty. All right, now. Let's spin you back around. Let's get the full visual. I've got a drip right here I wanna catch. I'm gonna run that paint right on up in there. And I think we're ready to move back up to the top. And let's start our blend right there. Are you ready? Let's do this. I knocked my top off. It'll be okay. I'm gonna hit this with my mister gently. And I'm gonna take my wild berry one more time. I'm gonna cross in front of you. Let's get our second coat of wild berry on this. Isn't this a yummy color? This whole thing almost looks cotton candy-ish, doesn't it? Let's get a nice finish of wild berry across the top. And right where our colors are gonna meet, we wanna make sure we have enough to do that blending. We don't want too much because the object of blending is not to add too much paint to it. If you add too much paint, then all it's gonna do is get heavy. The object of blending is to take a light finish, take a light finish, bring your colors together so that they're smooth and not harsh edged. So, as I bring this down, I'm gonna put a light finish just so my wild berry is nice and fully coated. And I'm gonna stop right there. We're gonna take our flamingo and we're gonna take our mister. First, I'm gonna put our flamingo on because I've already misted once. So I'm gonna put our flamingo on right here just below that cut line. Coat it really well. Now, I'm gonna spray that cut line. Just a little bit of mist. Now I'm gonna take my flamingo brush and I'm gonna smooth that cut line in between my wild berry and my flamingo so that when we blend, those are just gonna cascade down nicely. No harsh lines, just a fade of one color into the next. Now, based on what your vision is, is what your blend should look like. Your blend doesn't have to look like anyone else's. You just work the paint together. Work it so that it blends in a nice finish an ombre on your way down. We usually tell you don't overwork the paint. If you're gonna do a blend, you're gonna have to work that paint line because you need it to soften one color into the next. So you do need to work that paint. If you overwork it, leave it alone, come back to it. You can always add more but if you put too much, it'll get heavy and it'll sag, and that's not what you're going for here. Now, we have our ombre going right here with Wildberry and Flamingo. We need to come Flamingo into Coral Crush. So let's bring this on down. My drawer's in just a little bit too far, but it'll be okay, and I spilled paint. I wore my pink shoes today just because I knew if I spilled it on my shoes, it wouldn't look like Mel's. Y'all didn't see Mel's shoe picture from day before yesterday. She dropped an entire quart of gray mist on her shoes, but it was okay because they were gray shoes. So now she has an amazing two-tone pair of tennis shoes. All right, you ready for the coral crush into the Flamingo. Right. I'm gonna tonk you down just a little bit so you can see this happen. Uh, Coral Crush first. Let me bring the water bottle down. Got the fan going. 
And if you have any questions, I think Sherry is on. Sherry, I can't see my comments right now. So if you could catch hold of them for me, when I get up from the floor, I'll see what I can do about answering your questions. There we go. All the way across, just underneath that cut line. Now, a little bit of a mist. Just a little bit of Coral Crush because you don't want too much paint. You don't want it to sag. Hit that cut line and move up into that pink flamingo. And I love Coral Crush and Pink Flamingo. It gives you such a sunset finish, such a beach feel. Work it back and forth. If you feel it starting to get stiff, just give it a little mist and come on back in with it. Work your ombre, work your blend back and forth. If you want just a small blend in the center, work your blend in the center. I'm going to do the legs right here. I'm going to come all the way across the bottom of this drawer, just that little tip edge right there. Work it, come on down. If it's not exactly the way you want it, let it dry and go again. You can always add more paint. Now do you see the blend? Now do you see it happening? All right. We're going to grab our sunflower. I'm going to cross in front of you, pardon me. And we're going to doll up this sunflower right here. I've got the legs on the side. We're going to come all the way across. We've got a little bit already blending not a problem give it a little bit of a mist and start moving that paint together just let it move together it'll do it it'll do the blend let the paint work for you The object is to coast one color into the next color so that you don't see harsh lines and you get all the colors, a soft and gentle movement top to bottom. That, my friends, is how simple and easy it can be to blend refunk junk paint across your furniture. We've got a little bit of a drip right here I'm gonna catch hold of. We'll move that around a little bit, can fix that. I've got to run right there around the hardware. But top to bottom, I got a thumbs up from Mel. Wildberry into Flamingo into Coral Crush into Sunflower. And I'm going to stand back up, walk across in front of you. Good morning, Debbie. Do you think you can do this? I think you can do this. I believe that you have the skill sets and if you're using this paint, you have the right product to make this work. I still have a little bit of a harsh line right here that I'll address, but I'm gonna let that front side dry. How about that? I'll let that front side dry so that we will have exactly the look. I turned the camera crooked. How could I have done that? There we go. If it's a sunset, we want to be parallel to the horizon, don't we, Sherry? Thank you. Thank you, Miss Judy. Thank you, Barbara and Debbie. I appreciate it so much. That is exactly what we were going for, is that nice, soft blend that you see in the sky when the spring turns from winter. And it is such an amazing change. 
So let's do this side. Let's do it again so I can show you one more time. The runs that you see are left over from the previous owner's fun, fun time. I'll get those out and I'll touch those up later on. So here we go one more time. Ridges and edges, always keep your eye on your ridges and edges so that you don't have drips and runs. Drips and runs on this flat side I'll fix later. I have an additional plan of action for this piece once it's finished. So if you ever join me on Tuesday morning for Coffee and Create Live here at Two Girls Treasure, we'll do the finish work on this on Tuesday. So catch me then too, and I'll show you what we do once we get all the colors of the beautiful spring summer sunset in here. All right, so we did our wild berry, came right to the cut line, and I lost my flamingo. So we'll come down again. Autumn ferns, ooh, what a great idea, Lisa. I didn't think about that. All right, I'm gonna put my flamingo in place here and I'm gonna spritz my cut line right there. That's gonna drip my paint and that's okay. Drip painting's a whole other technique. We can do a tutorial on that too. I love doing drip painting. Makes a mess, but it makes an amazing finish. All right, let's take this flamingo across that wild berry and let's work it. work it side to side, work those legs up and down. Almost sounds like we're doing aerobics, but we're doing paint. It does, doesn't it, Mel? Well, I, I would classify doing an ombre as aerobic painting. Okay, this is aerobic painting. <laughs> Straight from the aerobics and yoga instructor. Oh no, not aerobics. Not aerobics, not just yoga. Aerobics. That's right. <laughs> Too much activity. Exactly. Just a nice gentle blend right there. And then come on up on that little edge. And for this particular project, I'm not concerned if my blend line from here down is exact with this blend line on this side. I'm okay with it. I'm a little more freeform painting, a little more boho, and I'm not incredibly concerned if my blend lines are a little bit higher or lower from the front to the side. As long as they're the same, we can keep moving. Just a nice little blend right there. Get my edges and bring that on down. All right, I'm gonna leave that be and I'm going to find my coral crush. There we go. I'm gonna touch the coral crush up into the flamingo. I brought it down a little bit lower on this side than I originally intended. So I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit more, but I'm going to run in a nice coat over this edge and I'm going to bring it up into my flamingo. I'm going to miss that cut line. Probably going to put just a little bit more flamingo right there. Just a little bit more right there. A nice bold pink stripe across the center. And we'll take our coral crush and we'll just blend that down right there. Nice and easy, not too much paint. We don't want to over, overweight 
our paint. So take just, just some and bring it in. Make that line nice and gentle. And bring it on down. Just like that. All right, now, now our coral crush into our sunflower. I don't know how we're doing for time. 1042, I think we're doing okay. Bring your yellow, can you see me? Nope. Oh, this is gonna be the best part of this. I don't want you to miss it. The yellow up into the coral crush. Just a gentle blend, not too much paint. Just work it back and forth across the center line. If you end up with some drips and runs, you can clean those up as you go. Just work it back and forth. If it starts drying too quickly, use your mister or stop and walk away. It's okay if you stop and walk away. It really, really is. You do not have to blend it all at one time. You can come back to it. And sometimes I have to do that because I start working it too hard and I peel the paint right back off where I just put it. Or it's not working for me the way I want and I get frustrated. Walk away from it. Turn it around to the other side and walk away from it. Because if you overwork it, overwork it, You'll spoil the whole thing. You will be frustrated, mad. You'll think you can't blend or you'll think this paint doesn't blend. And the truth is you can blend and this paint does. So don't get frustrated. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith in yourself. You can do this too. Look how beautiful. You can do this too. Now let's turn it around. Let's check our look on the front side. Down low, it looks really good. Up high, I've got a little bit of a harsh cut line. You can see that, can't you? Right here. We can fix that. We're gonna let that dry and we're gonna come back and fix that because a harsh cut line is not blending. If you have a harsh cut line, let it dry. Come back and work this section again. All you have to do is take your wild berry and your flamingo, these are the colors you're using, and just work them back across that center line. Down low, that is just about as good as it could get. I love it. What do you think? When do we get the mister, like, it, oh, where? Plastic, no, it doesn't work like that. This is a continuous mister bottle, and I found it at my local beauty supply. Um, I've been trying to source them. I know that Rethunk Junk has been trying to source them. They are very, very helpful in our work, but the best place I have found to get them is at the local beauty supply store, and that way you can get exactly what you need because as it sprays, you pump it twice, it keeps spraying. Good morning, y'all, how are you? All right, let's roll you up to the top and let's get this wild berry and this flamingo blend right on this side this time. I've got a little extra right there. We're going to move it in. I've got it all over my fingers. It'll be okay. All right, wild berry and flamingo and my Mr. Bottle. Are you ready for this? Let's do these. Let's do these two colors right here across this top line. Not too much paint. That was one of my biggest mistakes when I started trying to learn how to blend is that I would put too much paint in and then I had just a blob, just a mess. 
don't put too much paint on. It gets too heavy, too weighted, it sags instead of blending. And that's not what you're going for. Come on down. Not too much paint, but just enough. And I'm going to come right to the line. If you're concerned about making sure your blending lines are symmetrical from your front to your side, then just kind of mark them when you start. I'm not worried because I have a plan for this and it does not involve being perfect. So. I'm going to come on down a little bit more with my wild berry and we are just about ready to add the flamingo. So I'm going to put just a little bit of the flamingo on my brush, make sure my tips have just enough paint on them. I'm going to spray my cut line. Hello, come on in, watch this tutorial on blending Rethunk Junk paint products. If you have any questions, you feel free to ask. We are broadcasting on the Rethunk Junk main page, so you can always go back and watch the tutorial yeah, from the right beginning. Job. Thank you. Rethunk Junk paint products are so easy to blend. They're yeah. water-based, so it makes it that much simpler to blend these when you get ready. You just work it across. Thank you so much. All right. I don't have enough wild berry right here. I'm going to add just a little bit right across this top edge. And I'm going to go ahead and blend my wild berry into my flamingo. Because my flamingo was just not hitting that just right. Just manipulate your paint to work the way you need it to. Work it, wet it, and work it some more. There we go. If you get that harsh line, don't panic. Don't feel like you've done wrong. It's probably not right, but you can fix it. Give yourself the free leverage to fix it later. If you can fix it while you're moving, that's cool too. But don't panic behind it. Just keep working it. I'm going to spritz this. Because I don't want to add more paint. I have enough paint on there. I just needed a little bit of moisture. There we go. Move that pink flamingo. And I'm gonna leave this alone because I'm starting to pull the paint. But it's starting to blend just like I need it to. So let's tip it down just a little bit. And let's go that flamingo into that coral crush. Will I put a top coat on it? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Um, I don't have to, but again, I have some plans for this piece. So beyond just this paint job, I will be doing, uh, I'll be doing a second tutorial on this on Tuesday morning. Uh, you're always welcome to join me on the Two Girls Treasure page on Tuesdays, where I do a lot of tutorial work. There we go. But to answer your question, if I were gonna leave this alone, I wouldn't really need to put a top coat on this. Rethunk junk paints are self-sealing. This is not gonna get a lot of use on the sides, not a lot of movement. The drawer fronts, yes. The top of it, yes. You want to put your tough top 
where your movement's going to be, where you know you're going to get a lot of use out of it, where people are going to touch it and bump it and open drawers and long fingernails are going to catch hold of those drawer knobs. You want to make sure if you are going to use this in a high traffic area that you do protect it with our products that protect your paint. I like to always ensure that I tough top a piece of furniture simply because I do refinishing work and I sell what I refinish. So when I, when I have a customer purchase and leave with it, I wanna make sure it is as protected as it can possibly be. There we go. There we go. Need a little bit more spritz right here. If it starts to dry on you, don't let it drag. Just go ahead and spritz it so that you can move it and blend it and soften it. It's a water-based paint, so it is perfect, perfect for blending. And we are just a few minutes away from finished. So if you have any questions, please pop them in right now while we're live. If you have any questions on the hashtag replay, don't hesitate to pop them in the comments because we can always catch up with you later in the day, the week, or even the month. Whenever you're ready to blend your Refunk Junk paint products, all you've got to do is ask your questions and any one of us will be so happy to help you have a successful and beautiful project. Hey Charlotte. Hey Charlotte, Charlotte's in the house. It must be near 11 a.m. We'll call that quits right there for right now. Got a little bit of a harsh line here I need to check myself on. I've got a spot right here I wanna fill back in. I'll check myself on that as soon as it is dry. And I will probably roll in with another brush to soften this a little bit. And I know it sounds bad, but I have these. Do you see this brush? It is beat up, but it is the softest, easiest to move brush. This one inch, I love these brushes too. Find the brushes that make your work happy. Find the brushes that make your work much easier to do. And once you find all of your products, all of your tools, you can do this. Look how simple that was. Color, color, blend just like that. Put your color on, give it a good base coat, find your cut lines for each color. If you want them to be symmetrical all the way around, do it all the way around one color at a time. And once you have those colors in order that you want them, go back, add just a little bit of wet paint, add a little bit of moisture, blend them out with your favorite tools, and you will have a beautiful finish with your Rethunk Junk paint products. Don't let anybody tell you you have to buy the most expensive paints or the most expensive paint brushes there are on the market. And don't let anybody tell you that you can't paint and blend with Rethunk Junk because that would be the biggest April Fool's joke of all. I will not give you any of my April Fool's jokes because they did not go over really well. We do not have to sand, we do not have to prime, we do not have to wax with Rethunk Junk Paint. 
if you only have a Saturday and a Sunday to start and finish a project, this is the paint product for you. You can start, you can finish, and you can enjoy before you ever have to roll out on Monday morning. I'm Diane Pruitt. We're live here at Two Girls Treasure in Florence, South Carolina. We're right up the road from Millen, Georgia, where Refung Junk Paints are manufactured and distributed. Make sure you find your local retailer. If you're not sure if you have one, then hit the website at Refung Junk by Laura. Look at that Find a Retailer tab. Find who's near you. If you're not sure if you have one, then send a message to the contact form. They will definitely help you find who's near you. You can order from the website. You can purchase from your local retailer. Join the Rethunk Junk Q&A for any questions and answers that you might need while you're working with this paint. And if you've painted something fantastic, share it on the Creating with RTJ Paint Co. group. Make sure you answer those questions if you wanna join the group, because that's where all the cool kids are. Thank you so much for being here this morning. It's Saturday, April 1st. What a great way to kick off April. Stay tuned for more Rethunk Junk tutorials from some of the most fantastic retailers across the country. Y'all have a wonderful weekend.